delivered, top price for our beef, beautiful San Francisco weather. What more could we ask? Well, a few days out of the saddle. <laughs> By golly, we'll have that too. Listen, as a change from Hop Sink's chuck wagon, I'm throwing a little supper party tonight. Oysters, steak, champagne, the works. <laughs> after that, after that, five days for all of us in San Francisco with nothing to do but have a good time. Hot hey, to go. Oh, that's what I've been waiting to hear you say. What's the matter, Johnny? Mr. Cartwright, I think you made a mistake here. How's I that? got too much pay. No, no, you haven't. You and Ham both deserve a bonus. Now, you're going to have a good time, but remember, this is not the Ponderosa in San Francisco, so be careful. <laughs> Thanks, boss, but don't worry about us. Well, after riding trail with these boys of yours, this town is going to seem downright tame. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Come on, Ham. Don't be late for supper. Fine, boys. Well, with hands like Johnny and Ham, we won't have any trouble running the Ponderosa. Come on, let's get back to the hotel. That's a plan. I'm beginning to like this San Francisco town. You know something? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy that sweet wife of mine a whole bowl of Chinese silk. Silk? You say silk? I said silk. Nothing too good for that sweet wife of mine. Gentlemen, I just happened to overhear. Now, as you see by my card, I'm a silk merchant. And I just happened to have a brand new shipment from the Orient. It's the home of the silkworm. Now, if you'll follow me to my establishment... Why, sure, neighbor. Yes, gentlemen, right back here. I have my shop because it's uh, wholesale. <laughs> right this way, gentlemen. I hope Shanghai Pete takes them off my hands. That ship sails for Hong Kong at midnight. Take them in, boys. That's very strange. Johnny and Ham should be here by now. Don't worry about them too, Paul. They'll be here. They ain't gonna turn down free oysters and champagne, I'll guarantee you. Uh, he's right, Pa. Hey, you know, I, I feel kind of guilty. Oh? Why? Well, here we are. Having ourselves a big time while Adam's home working himself to death. Oh? Yeah, doggone it, I do too, Paul. Really? Well, it's too bad you boys didn't think about that before you rigged those straws you drew to see who'd come on this trip. <laughs> hey, Paul. <laughs> what about Hop Singh? Is he gonna come along? Oh, I doubt that very much. He's got a hundred relatives in town he wants to visit. Yeah. Wish old Hamilton Johnny hurry up and get back. After supper, me and little Joe sort of figured we'd go over to one of them places where they got them good-looking waiter gals. Yeah, <laughs> now you're talking, brother. <laughs> now you're talking, brother. If you think I'm going to let you and little Joe wander around the Barbary Coast at night alone, you've got yourself another thing coming. This is San Francisco. It's a big city, and it's a wild city. Yeah, but boy, you let Hamp and Johnny go. Well, you're not Hamp and Johnny. Haven't you ever heard of shanghai -ing? Yeah, it's got something to do with sailors, isn't it? You know, there isn't a ship in this harbor that isn't short of sailors. You could be slugged over the head and on your way to Singapore before you ever knew what happened. Well, that sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Oh. No, really, I, I, there's a lot of good-looking women in Singapore. In Singapore, but not on board a ship. And how would you like to eat nothing more than sour salt pork for more than a year? Oh, no, I wouldn't like that. No, I guess not. Well, you boys take care of yourselves. This is San Francisco. It isn't the Ponderosa. There's Hampton Johnny now. It's about time. <laughs> Ah, uh, Hopsing. I thought you were with your relatives. Something wrong, Hopsing? 
Not know for sure. The number three cousin, he see two cowboys go in alley. Hit on head, not come out. Cousin, come quick, tell Hop Sing. Think maybe it's Mr. Hemp and Mr. Johnny. Hemp and Johnny? Uh, wait a minute. What makes you think it might be Hemp and Johnny? They not in hotel room. Well, maybe Horst and I ought to check on it. I think we'll all check it. They're probably just over in some saloon having themselves a good time. Four more before midnight, if you want to get paid. That'll be all, boys. Cowboys. What can I do to make them look more like sailors? <laughs> Any luck? Not a bit, Paul. Any luck? Nothing. Well, I'm going to the police. Hey, listen, you mind if Foss and I have a look around some more? Well, I guess it doesn't take four of us to talk to a policeman. Just a moment. Remember, this is not the Ponderosa, so you two stay out of trouble. Do you understand? Oh, Pie, you know us better than that. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Are you the man in charge here? What can I do for you? Uh, my name is uh, Cartwright, uh, Ben Cartwright. I just drove a herd of cattle across the Sierra. Well, San Francisco can certainly use a decent beefsteak. Well, Sergeant, I didn't come here to discuss beefsteaks. Uh, two of my top hands have disappeared. Well, it, it does happen. Well, is this or isn't it the San Francisco Police Department? It's exactly that. Well, I, I just told you, two of my top hands have disappeared, and I've come here for help. And I suppose you expect me to drop everything and go find them, hmm? Well, yes, that's exactly it. Mr. Cartwright, men are always disappearing in this city. And you do nothing to try to find out what happened to them? Do you realize how many policemen it would take to keep an eye on every Shanghai hideout on the Barbary Coast? Well, Sergeant, I'm not interested in how many men it would take. I came here for help. Mr. Cartwright, this is a seaport. Ships come here from all over the world. Ships need sailors. Oh, sailors, yes, but not cowboys. Oh, you'd be surprised how many cowboys become sailors. Now, I, I suggest that you do as all the ship captains do when they find themselves shorthanded. Set out and find yourself a new crew. Do, do you sit here and condone the buying and selling of human beings? I don't condone it, but I don't have enough men to do anything about it, so I accept it as an unfortunate fact. Now, please, if you'll excuse me. All right, Sergeant. You mark my words. I'm going to find those two men of mine with or without your help. All right, you go right ahead. But I warn you, look out. Hey, we're getting pretty close to that waterfront, ain't we? Figure it out. If you were going to Shanghai somebody and put them on a ship, where would you take them? Out on the desert? What do you keep talking about Shanghai and poor little Joe? You know as well as I do that Hemp and Johnny are right around here in some of these little joints. The only thing is these bartenders don't seem to want to give out much information, do they? Uh, it's because they're all in cahoots. Oh, quit worrying. Come on. Hey, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look, we're not going to get anywhere this way. Boss, why don't you cover that side of the street? I'll take this side. Hop saying go check with your cousin, see if they've seen anything. Not think it could you boys be here on Barbary Coast. Yeah, you're as bad as Paul Hopsey. Now, I've heard tell a man can have himself a lot of fun down here on this Barbary Coast. Yeah, well, you know, brother, I've heard the same thing. <laughs> Get going.
Johnny. Yes, sir. All right. I'm looking for a couple of friends of mine. I thought they might have come in here. Two cowboys. Sonny, we serve out drinks here, not information. Yeah, well, I, I just... And thought... you look too young to drink, so uh, why don't you get out of here? Wait a minute, all it. I better tell Mr. Pringle. Oh, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, Mr. Cartwright. Where's horse and little Joe? They go Barbary Coast. What? Not good. On Barbary Coast, hit, slice, cut, push, very dangerous. The Shanghai. Little Joe didn't have enough sense to know that horse should have. Why didn't you tell him? I tell him. He say look like fun. Look like fun. Better find those two before they get into some real trouble. Barbary Coast. Hobson, go find cousin. Joseph. Well, at least I found one of you. Now, where's your brother? Oh, he's looking for Hamp and Johnny. Didn't I tell you two to stay together? Oh, we thought it would go faster this way. Isn't that horse? I tell you to stay out of trouble. Oh, I ain't no trouble. This here's Busthead Brannigan. He's a box fight champion of the whole Barbary Coast. Come on, Mr. Busthead, wake up. Hey, you mean you did this for money? Sure. I told you it's gonna be fun down on this Barbary Coast, little Joe. Look at that, more than $100. Makes me madder than a mischief to think about how much talent I done wasted for free. Come on, Mr. Busthead, wake up. Come on. Come on. Mr. Busthead, like I told you, I don't want your championship. It was nice of you to offer to help us. Come on. Mr. Busthead, I want you to meet my pa. Busthead Brannigan, this is my pa. No, o over here. Mr. Busthead? Champion? Oh, you real fine fella. Well, champ, have you any conceivable idea of the seriousness of the situation we're in? Serious? Paul, you still think Johnny and Hamper are in trouble? I don't think it. I know it. Hey, you mean Shanghai? Yes, I mean Shanghai. Dad, burn it. Let's tear this dang town apart, dude. We'll do no such thing. We're not going to invite trouble unless it's forced on us. And that goes for you too particularly. Well, just don't stand there making a spectacle of yourself. Go get your clothes on. Get your shirt on. Mr. Busthead, it's a real pleasure meeting you. You'll be a great champion. Mr. Hoss, Mr. Hoss, number three cousin, he'd like to talk to you. Hoss, I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. You need something more, Hoss Singh's relatives being so dang glad to meet me? Why not? He win $100 on fight. <laughs> <laughs> you all be careful. Huh? Huh? Cousin say everybody on Barbary Coast talk about men and two sons. Say they ask too many questions. Hey, everybody's in cahoots. I don't see how we're ever going to find out anything. Well, we won't find out anything if the three of us keep barging in like we're going to tear the place apart. No, we used to do it that way. Well, it won't work now. Now, you two boys, you get back to the hotel and you stay there. And don't move until you hear from me. I'm going to see what I can find out alone. Hey, Paul, don't you think we'll go along with you? No, I don't. If I find out anything, I'll send Hop Singh for you. Paul, you stay out of trouble, you hear? You make sure you listen to your own advice, young man. You too. Come on, Hobson. Lay off. Lay off. Sure, old Pa knows what he's doing. Don't you worry about Paul. He knows what he's doing. Wait here. 
Try to keep it up? <laughs> if it isn't too much uh, bother, could you uh, make me a brandy squash, please? Don't bother at all. That's what I'm here for. Thank you. What? Thank you. Now, there's a surprise. What's the matter? Something wrong? Wrong? Why, sir, this is the finest brandy squash I've ever tasted in my life. And I've tasted them all the way from New York to Chicago to New Orleans. Well, I... I'm glad you like it. It's an art. Barton, it's an art. Not many men have the talent for it. Come on. Did you ever work in New Orleans? No, can't say as I have. Oh, too bad. Why, a man with your talent could demand any wage he asks for. Yes, sir. Fine profession, Barton. And you meet a mighty lot of interesting people. <laughs> All kinds, no doubt about it. Yes, I can imagine. I, uh, a wager that, uh, with drinks like this, practically everybody in town drops in here one time or another. Well, we, we get our share. I have two friends in town I just gotta bring in here and show them what a good drink really tastes like. Say, I wonder if they've been in here already. Well, I got a pretty good memory for faces. A couple of cowboys, they work up on a ranch in the Sierras. Drove a herd of cattle into town. Uh, let's, let's see now. You say, um, I want to get this straight. You say that there were uh, two of them. That's right. Those two are inseparable. Two of the best hands they ever had. Well, hello. My name is Alexander Pendleton. I'm the proprietor of this establishment. I don't believe I've had the pleasure of uh, seeing you in here before. Um, no, no, I, I think not. Uh, my name is Ben Cartwright. I've just been complimenting your bartender on the excellence of his drinks. Well, that's very kind of you. Uh, why don't we go down to the end of the bar? It'll be uh, quieter, more comfortable. All right. <laughs> Over in the corner, better. Thanks. Uh, you say your your name is Pendleton? Yes, uh, Alexander Pendleton. Would you care for another drink? Well, thank you. Bartender? Yes, sir. A real squash this time. <laughs> for the road. <laughs> <laughs> Boss, are you sure you know what you're doing? Haven't you had enough trouble with those two cowboys you bought from Cut Ray Joe? That's their boss. You just dropped through the floor. I need three more men to fill out Captain Shark's crew. And I don't prefer to buy them from Cut Ray Joe. Mm. Oh, uh, but and if I... you're thinking of asking for a raise, don't. The man was lying to you. You make the worst drinks in town. <laughs> I'm getting worried. They've been going over an hour. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing, little Joe. If we don't hear from Hop Sang or Paul one the next 15 minutes, I'm just about ready to go down there and tear this dang Barbary Coast apart board for board. Where's Paul? Not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? Or where'd you leave him? Mr. Cartwright, tell Hop Sang, wait. Hop Sing wait a long time. Mr. Cartwright no come back. Hop Sing worry. Come see you boy. Hop Sing, you, you shouldn't have done that. Paul comes out of there and you ain't there. What's he going to do? Number five cousin wait. Well, Joe, you don't reckon anything's wrong with Paul. Pa, don't worry. He can take care of himself. Boys, all right? Yeah. All right. How did they get you in here? You'd never believe it. After me telling the boys, 
to stay out of trouble. I know what you mean. Oh, if Johnny hadn't wanted to buy that silk for his wife, we we wouldn't be in this mess. Uh, well, never mind about that now, Ham. The point is, uh, how can we get out of this mess? There's nothing we can do. You raise a fuss, they come in and beat you over the head. I've got some fine sailors for you, Captain. Excellent, excellent. It sounds like that Mr. Pendleton. Well, you promised me six. There are only three. You've got to give me time. I need those men. My ship sails at midnight. Mr. Pendleton. Excuse me. I want to make a deal with you. A deal, Mr. Cartwright? I don't know what you expect to get for us. But whatever it is, I'll pay you twice that amount if you let us out of here. Twice? Fair enough. Oh, no, you don't. A contract is a contract. You agreed to give me six men. So I did. An interesting offer, Mr. Cartwright, but uh, due to circumstances beyond my control... Three times the going price! A contract is a contract if you want my business in the future. As you say, a contract is a contract. Good. The one who's talking, he isn't drunk. Or perhaps he just holds his liquor well. You know my principles. No one, Emma. The two sailors, yes. The sober one, no. Unless you get me four more men within the hour, I'll take my business to cut rate Joe. All right, boys, come get them. Mr. Cartwright, I feel pretty low down about all this. Oh, John, it's... It's my fault for not keeping us all together. All right, come on, let's go. Don't do it, Mr. Cartwright. You'll just be getting a beating for nothing. Believe me, it's best. All right, come on. Uh, boys, well, uh, we'll, we'll get out of this somehow. My boys are bound to be looking for me now. No, 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 not that one. The captain turned him down cold. Come on, let's go. Not a dead burn bit. Unless I'm getting worried. Yeah. Me too. I'm getting just about ready to tear this death blame down apart. Come on, little Joe. I, uh, I brought you something to eat. Well, I'm not hungry. Well, you better be. You know, Shanghai Pete is pretty mad about not being able to sell you. The Shanghai Pete, is that what that Mr. Pendleton calls himself? Oh, well, you got his wrong end, too. A Shanghai Pete sometimes calls himself Mr. Pendleton. Uh, Mr. Pendleton. But you better eat this. What's well, already ain't got no, no knockout drops in it. Uh, you're real quality, ain't you? What? Oh, well, I mean is, we don't get your kind in here often. Mostly drunks, sailors and farmers and cowboys like them other two. Well, I'll have you know that them other two, two, the finest men I've ever known. Just because they happen to go out in a little celebration. It wasn't a little one. It was a real good one. <laughs> oh, I don't know why men have to act up so. It just gets them in trouble. I wish someday I'd find just one man who... Wasn't always wanting to get into trouble. Oh, well. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, um, don't go. What? Why not? S sit down. Uh, what's your name? Kathleen. Kathleen. Well, that's a, that's a right pretty name. I think so. Uh, your name is Ben Cartwright, ain't it? Kathleen. Tell me, what, what's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? Ain't that funny? So many men have asked me the same question. And I've given it a lot of thought. And I think the reason is, I like the money. Well, you're, you're certainly an, an honest sort. <laughs> you think so, really? Oh, yeah. Well, why are you surprised? Well, 
I don't know. Sometimes, you know, you can't just trust everybody. Well, Kathleen, I trust you. Oh, I was sort of hoping you would. Kathleen, now tell me, if this uh, Shanghai Pete or, or um, Mr. Pendleton or whatever his name is, if he sells me, do you get anything out of it? No, I don't. Not a penny. Well, wouldn't you like to? Oh, yes, I would. I've been asking to be put on commission. Kathleen, if you help me out of here... <gasps> Mercy, no. Well, I have the money. Well, I don't see how you could. Wait the minute I brought you in here. Picked your pocket first. I, I mean, I, I don't have it with me. But I own a ranch. I can get all the money I want without any trouble. How much? If you help me get out of here and tell me where I can find the other two men, five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars? Five hundred. You wouldn't back out. Oh, I give you my word, the money's at my hotel. If you help me get out of here, you get the five hundred dollars. You know something, Mr. Cartwright. What? I was thinking about getting you out of here the minute I came in. Oh, you'll help me then, Kathleen. Little while. That furniture with us ain't no good. I know. He ain't getting us no place. Look, you go on down the corner. See if Hopsing knows anything new. If he doesn't come on back and the two of us will take this place apart. That's what we should have done in the first place. My temper's on a short fuse, Joe. I can just feed it. Well, you're not alone, brother. Hurry up. Hopsey. Hopsey, you heard anything new? It's very bad news. What do you mean? Number five cousin. He see Mr. Ben go in saloon. No see Mr. Ben come out. What saloon? That one, on the other corner. Hopsey, are you right sure? Very sure. Have more bad news. Number six cousin, he work on dock. He say ship short-handed, no can sail. Ship now ready. Hobson think maybe Mr. Johnny, Mr. Hemp, no longer cowboy. Is sailor man now. Hobson think maybe Mr. Ben, sailor man too. <laughs> Mr. Hoss, where you go? I'm going over that wire to be saloon. You better wait for little Joe. You only one man. Yeah, well, that ain't but one saloon, is it? Mister, I want me some information. I want it straight, and I want it quick. Now, mister, you better get to talking. Otherwise, I'm going to twist your geezer pipe out. My pa was seen coming into the saloon, and he wasn't seen coming out. Now, where is he? You two better just stand right where you are. Otherwise, you're going to be waking up with somebody tapping you in the face with a spade. Now, mister. I'm looking for Ben Cartwright and two of my best friends. Here, here, what's going on in here? What is this? Mister, you're going to find out what it is if I don't get me some information in quick. Well, now, is this any way to get it? This is a respectable establishment, son. I'm the proprietor, Alexander Pendleton. Have I had the pleasure of seeing you in here before? Don't make no difference whether you have or not. I won't meet some answers. Now, son, please try to calm yourself down. What is it you want? I want my paw. His name's Ben Cartwright and two of his ranch hands. Then why all the shouting? I talked to Mr. Cartwright just a short time ago. Told him where he could find his men. Mister, are you telling me the truth? Now, why would I have any reason to lie to you? Won't you please put that thing away? I have a reputation to maintain here. That's better. Don't you forget. I can draw it out again right quick. Laddie Buck, I'm only trying to help you. Do you want to hear about your father or not? I reckon I did get a little too excited. Dad, burn it, I've been worried plum sick. Well, now, why don't you try to calm yourself down? Everything's all right. Here. Why don't we come down here at the end of the bar? Quiet. Relax. Have a drink. Bartender? 
What do you have? Well, I'll have a beer if it's all the same to you, sir. Down the hatch. Yes, sir. A fine piece of merchandise. I can't remember. Uh, you better start remembering, Buster, because I'm a cowboy. I ain't no sailor. And I like dry land. There's one way I can get it I can think of, and that's holding you under till you drink all the water in this bay. Now, you starting to remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's real good. You just took the first step to establishing a basis of a friendship between me and you. Now, where's my paw? I'll be back in a minute. Oh, Kathleen, I'll never forget you for this. Oh, I believe that. Cartwright, you're worth less if you're all battered up. Double crossing, which? Well, quick, Buck Katie, how much do you want for him? A hundred bucks. A hundred? I offered you five hundred. And then turn me into the police afterward. Oh, I know the likes of your kind. A hundred and fifty bucks, the price has gone up. Oh, come now, quick, Buck, you know better than that. This is stolen merchandise. This is carriage trade, and you know it. Double crossing writes the lot of you. He won't be too easy to turn over. I'll have to buy him new clothes. The overhead has eaten me up, Katie. All right. I'll make it half price. Seventy-five dollars and it's a deal. But only because I've got to get back to the store before I miss. Quick, Buck, you're a thief and you know it. But I do need the merchandise. Mr. Cartwright, quiet. You'll see your crew. That's what you want, ain't it? See you later, Cartwright. Have a pleasant trip, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, all right, boys. Let's see what we can do with it. Come in this room, but quick, but cake. What you brought Cartwright is supper. Oh, hello, sweetie. Don't sweetie me, you little double-crosser. You sold Cartwright to cut rate. But darling, only because it was costing you money to keep him. All that good food. And if, especially if you couldn't sell him quick. Now, don't do that. I wouldn't cheat you. Sweetheart, now would I? I'm not so sure. Oh, little Katie wouldn't hold out on Shanghai Pete. Here you are. See? Twenty-five dollars. Is that all you got for him? <gasps> Captain Shock already turned him down. And Cutrate Joe's got to be stuck with him. No, <laughs> 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 no, you're not mad at little Katie now, are you? 
Lucky for you, you caught me in a good mood. Besides, I've got another Cartwright. And is he a beauty? A live one, a real live one. <gasps> All right, bring him in, boy. <laughs> My paw. Where is he? Now, now wait, wait, wait a minute, Lighty. Wait a minute. Your, your dad isn't here. Where's my paw? Now, now, now listen. Cut right to I'm a lover, not a fighter. Where's my paw? I'm safe. Relax. Relax. Now, what happened? Uh, Mr. Horse, he go in saloon. Long time no come out. Hopsin go in saloon, no see Mr. Horse. Something happened, Mr. Horse, too. Now what's the loan? You know, brother, I think you're right. Uh -huh. As I told you, I've seen this man before and turned him down. Not at this price, Captain. Only a hundred dollars. I'm letting him go to sacrifice because I'm after your future business. Besides, your ship sails at midnight. Cut rate, Joe. You know my principles. I'm a fair man and a temperance man. I'm not offering you a drink. I'm offering you a sailor. I'm not a sailor. Sir, I do not approve of the practice of shanghaiing. Then what are you doing with two of my men? I would not resort to it except I find myself so often short-handed. Now what kind of an excuse is that? Sir, I have dedicated my life to stamping out the evils of drink. It is abominable. Any man who is so drunk that he doesn't know what's happening to him deserves to be shanghaied. This man is perfectly sober. I can't use him. Well, thank you, Captain. I can't say I agree with all of your principles, but... Take a smell, Captain. The reek of demon rum is nauseating to me. This man is obviously drunk. I'll take him. All right, boys. <laughs> What's your part in this? Honestly, I just happened to be walking by. <laughs> well, you just better happen to start remembering a few more things. Oh, now, laddie. You wouldn't be harming little me, would you? <laughs> That's such a beautiful arm. <laughs> It'll be a shame to tear it off. No. Oh. Oh. Start talking. I don't know what you want to know. We want to know about a man named Ben Cartwright. Oh, I don't know. We sold him. You sold, sold him? him. Where? To Cartwright Joe's. Down the street in, in Embarcadero Alley. You sold our paw? Yes. How much did you get for him? Well, horse, for Pete's sake, who cares how much you got for him? Let's get down to this Cartwright Joe's before Pa and the boys are on their way to China. Let me get my hat. <laughs>
Topsy! Little Joe, Mr. Horse, this cousin number three. He see Mr. Ben. They take Mr. Ben away on ship. They find a few Louis layer. Okay. You follow me. Come. Don't fight it, Mr. Cartwright. Just ain't no use. Johnny hadn't wanted to buy some silk for his wife, he wouldn't be in this mess. Oh, we've been in worse messes back in the Ponderosa, and we've always been able to get out of them. I know it. My heart just ain't in it. Well, my heart is in it. And after what I've been through, the ship and 40 sailors beginning to look pretty small. Captain! I don't mind to see your captain. Come on, now, where's your captain? I want to see you. Sailor in the future, if you want to see me, you come to me. Don't send for me. It isn't done. Oh, it is, it, isn't it? Well, you listen to me. Have you ever heard of mutiny? Mutiny? Why, you're worse than a pirate. You and your high principles and your temperance, I'll see to it that your license is revoked on every sea in the face of this earth. Just who do you think you are? I'm Ben Cartwright of the Ponderosa. The Ponderosa? The Ponderosa. I know her well, Captain. A four-masted schooner out of New Orleans. The Ponderosa is a ranch. A ranch. I always wanted a little chicken ranch. There's a place up in Santa Rosa. Now, I'm an American citizen. I know my rights on board of every ship. Take Mr. Ben on that ship. I have enough men in those mountains to sink every ship in this harbor, and so help me, I'll do it. That's our pa's voice. Music to my ears. It's like a bugle call saying charge. Let's go. You keep a civil flag. Out of trouble. Well, it took you fellas long enough to find me. Thanks, Bob. Oh. Us? Mm, 
I'd darn sight rather eat it, Paul. I know. Paul, how much that little red-headed gal will get for you? <laughs> I wouldn't tell him, Pa. If she did get enough, we might want to sell you back. If she didn't get enough, you wouldn't want to admit it, would you? Very funny. Come in. Hi. Hi. Here are your clothes, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, how'd you get them? We had a little business left to finish with cut rate Joe. Yes, I see that. You know what that little weasel was doing? He's going back into business. Second-hand clothes. He was trying to sell our outfits. Come in. Mr. Johnny, have surprise for you. Number seven cousin in silk business. Make you present. One full fine china silk for your wife. Oh, gee, I sure would like to have me a court and shade made out of that. I wouldn't do it, Ham. Silk can get a man in a whole lot of trouble. Well, at least we're all together again. Oh, yeah, yeah thank thanks, you, boss. boss, for everything. <laughs> and tomorrow morning, bright and early, we're going to start out on a little vacation. How about it? Well, Pa, I'd, I'd just as soon we went back to the Ponderosa. Well, you're the one who was yelling about getting a vacation. I know, I, I know, but a, a vacation's time for a change, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I think I got my change. <laughs> all right. Well, Paul, if it's all the same to you, there's a, there's a little den of wildcats on the Ponderosa I think I'd rather tangle with than any more of these city folks. You mean you want to go back to work? Well, I reckon I do, Paul, and that way we could let old Adam have a vacation. <laughs> well, all right, then. Tomorrow morning, bright and early, we'll head back to the Ponderosa. Hopsing have one more big surprise. Number nine cousin is cook in hotel dining room. Hopsing help fix special fine supper. Oyster champagne steak. Hey, what are we waiting for? Let's get cleaned up. We'll get down to the dining room. Come on. Oh, no, you stay right here. Hopsing bling up. You no leave a hotel room. You go probably coast. Very dangerous. Hit, slice, kick, push, Shanghai. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think he's got something there at that. <laughs> hey, Paul. Sure enough. How much did that little gal get for you? You'll never know. <laughs>